Greetings, weary traveller. We return to you now, at the turn of the tide, for post show 126. This week we cover... <clears throat> I can't do the whole thing in character. That intro would take an hour and a half. Um, hey everyone, we're back, episode 126, to business, jam-packed episode, the Demon Slayer season 4 finale, and of course the resulting announcement that follows it. House of the Dragon, uh, we're into season two, episodes three and four, Kaiju number eight finale, Moshuko Tensei season two finale, the elusive samurai pilot. And that's right, we're on that new shit. Uh, the Boys, episode five and six of season two, uh, the Bear uh, pilot of season three, Oshinoko episode one of season two, and of course, Delicious in Dungeon, the, uh, the latest thing Grant is trying to get me to watch. There's uh, some news and whatnot sprinkled throughout. Enjoy. Oh, hey there, Grant. Hello, David. Yoshiki. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's pretty good, eh? That was bad, good. as far as impressions go. I'll take it. Um, okay, I think we gotta, we have to start with Demon Slayer. We have to, yeah. Finale, uh, there's a lot of fun stuff going on with House of the Dragon right now, mm-hmm. and um, the boys. I got, and, I got a pretty big list in front of me, actually, to talk about tonight. Yeah, and... Uh, a couple ooh, finales, a oh. couple premieres. Yeah, yeah. I've, got, I've got some stuff for you, too. Okay, so... But let's let's hit it with the with the big boy. So, the finale happened, Demon Slayer season four, mm-hmm. and I, I think it's pretty safe to say because they announced it literally at the same time as the finale <laughs> as they as they tend to do, which I actually Tim appreciate. Minute. Yeah, I, I like they not have to think about it. It's just it's just we know. Yeah. Um, but the rumors were true. So Demon Slayer's uh, final television episode has concluded. Yeah. Because the show is going to wrap up on the big screen with a movie trilogy. Not a single movie, <sighs> but a uh, movie trilogy. I actually, I filmed a little uh, TikTok, as they say, the Zoomers, and a uh, Instagram reel that we'll put up on the Part-Time Otaku podcast socials, where people Check can follow, find us, on uh, my preliminary thoughts on this. But I think there are, like, um, as some would say, there are puts and takes or mm. pros and cons word but okay let's briefly touch on the um on the announcement and then and then we can get into the nitty-gritty of the of the finale what, what what are your thoughts on you know it wrapping up in theaters wrapping up in theaters like i think um i don't know i because I, there's been two types of anime movie the past couple of years we've had like the prequel kind of set up one-offs that made sense with, like, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, and then yep. Mugen Train was, like, a really good kind of, you know, literally, like, a, a bridge point uh, from one season to another. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, you have... Which, I, again, I love those. They're they're kind of... Mugen Train uh, really worked in retrospect. 100%. And Zero, too, like, looking back after the hidden yes. inventory stuff and, like, kind yeah. of being able to combine them. Like, it all, it all, like, worked really well. But then you have other stuff where, um, you know, for example... I didn't see it in theaters, but, like, you know, there was the Kaguya-sama... Uh, movie where it was just kind of more or less like a big episode and it felt like an episode it didn't necessarily like there was grand moments in it but it didn't feel like you know there had to be like this push for like a, a movie premiere for it and then also recently more recently the Q movie um whereas like the tension was kind of all taken out of it because you kind of want to build that over a season mm-hmm. i don't think the these this trilogy is going to have that problem i think they are going to be spectacle I think there's going to be suspense leading from one to the another. Another, at least like we're not being like drip fed of like, oh, it's going to be another one. Oh, we're going to make a third. Like it's not like an Attack right. on Titan situation. They well, said it's going to be three. That is true. They you did, know, like, like yeah. they have been clear at the very least. It's Which, clear. You know, you it's it's uh, weirdly you can't ask for much more. Um, yeah. So I I, I kind of like it. I think it'll be fun. It'll be eventized. It's going to make a ton of money. It was crazy to hear it, like. You know, on the big picture podcast, like they had, like they had to mention Demon Slayer a oh, couple wow. points, and like you know, just talking about because you know there was that one solo pod I did, solo pod I did talking about like the uh, CinemaCon in Vegas, and oh, like, yeah, yeah. a lot of huge presence there, and 
you know, everyone had to like sit and like listen about Haikyuu and Demon Slayer and the new Spy Family Code, or even like Code Way. That's a good example of like a show that is serialized where they can take a, make a movie of like an original because that was that's not in the manga. That was like an original story right. made for big picture, and it worked better that way. So I don't know. I'm not worried. I think it's going to be fun. Um, I think just the one thing that could kind of hang everybody up is time in between. If they do a year pop, I think we're good. But yeah, I think it's hard to say. Yeah. Okay. So I agree with everything you're saying. Um, you know, one note I'll add is like after seeing you know these last, you know, some of these high moments in seasons uh, two and four and to an extent three, and then obviously the movie they already did. It's clear that Ufotable, like the production, is capable of bringing it. So I think, yeah. um, you know even just like the scale of what they've shown of the infinity castle in the show Mm -hmm. and uh and what's left to tell in the story it's very clearly going to be pretty action oriented and they they definitely excel in that environment so i think like it's it's well suited for the theaters it's surprising to me that it's three entire movies um yeah I'm curious about run times, but also... I would, I would say if they are... The fact that they've said there's three, I bet you these are like clean in and out one and a half, hour and a half each yeah. would be my guess. Maybe I'm, two for the last one. But. Yeah, I'm curious. But the uh, the big thing that I think everyone will will note um, is, is the time in between, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we're going to have a hold up on... Well, maybe. We'll see. But if precedent is anything uh, or if we follow what that happened last time, you know, there's a... There's a delay on the international release. So that was a big thing, and that was brought up in that CinemaCon presentation by Crunchyroll. Is like they, you know, they didn't say like day and date, but they have, they are aware that there is such a hunger for it here yeah. in America, where like the premiere, like they hint that like we have big premieres coming. And I think maybe without saying it at the time, they probably were talking about Demon Slayer. Yeah. Saying like they're, cause they were hinting at like stuff coming down the pipe. Interesting. Um, but the other, so the other thing too, and I can't remember if we talked about this uh, last podcast or if it happened in between, there was that, uh, there was, I think there was information on a Blu-ray release for, I think, uh, Swordsmith Village arc. Okay. Um, I think I had sent it to you where, Production for season four was taking place as season two was premiering. Right. So they are clearly like very structured, ahead of schedule. You know, like they are again, and it had like it's it's all hearsay, but like you know, there's so much, you know, drama with you know, kind of workload and kind of you know, employee mm-hmm. satisfaction. Like Votable apparently has like a good record, and they seem to like stay out of the headlines. When yeah, they, that's and true. they have they do a lot of these you know, um, bigger project, bigger scale projects. So I, 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 th- I think hearing like little detail like that, if they were working that far ahead on season four, which was, you know, I guess two years prior, two and a half years prior, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think they probably got some work already done ahead of time for, and like yeah. probably half the stuff is set up in for these movies. Yeah. You would imagine the season, right? So, a lot of the assets and things like that. Yeah. The storyboarding is already done. Though I will say, like, you know, as far as, again, on timing, like, even if we get, you know, like, let's play this out very briefly, like, even if we get a year in between a pop, it's 25, 2025, 26, 27, if we do a year each, if it takes, like, 18 months in between, we're talking nearly five years until Demon Slayer wraps up. I'm very curious on, on Cadence, but... I, you know, I've been, you know me, I've been like rewatching the episode and rewatching mm-hmm. people react to the episode and like the scale of that, of the explosion and that, that ending we can get, we should get into the finale now. That um, should, oh, okay, sorry. You, no, but <laughs> that is movie tier quality and it's like, okay, I see where you're going with You know what I mean? Like they're like, I think they're just trying to showcase at the end of that finale, like this is going to be, you know, air quotes, big. This isn't like I, a fight in a forest. I yeah, exactly. I think it's stuck in a bubble for like yeah, you know. Like, I think go for it. was a huge missed opportunity and a missed marketing of you know. I think for years now they should stop putting Demon Slayer season one or, or sorry season one like episode one the premiere in theater. They should be putting the finales in like this would have been like dynamite on yeah. the screen. You know, like, the soundtrack was banging, even at home, like, just, you know, over the TV speakers and all that, like, it was, 
incredible. Like the use of Beautiful. silence and the you know the kind of the score kind of weaving in and out, and then you know when it, you know the explosion and the action. Like it's just it's so they have such such an eye and a, and a flavor for like you know um, like just the like package. You know, I, that's what I love Demon Slayer for. Is just you know you can argue about the story and this and that yeah. and like kind of you know like this type of character and that type of character and it's all archetypes or whatever. But like. It is a showpiece, and like they show up almost every time. Even like the season we were kind of like iffish on, like it had these huge bombastic moments. moments. Yeah, you know, I don't know, spectacle. And they they crush it. Yeah, that shot of the explode. You know, the whole explosion, the way they did it was unbelievable. But there's sure. a couple of shots in particular. Uh, you mentioned one about like. Um, the way the music comes up and the explosion goes. I'm thinking of um, when the wind Hashira sees it. Yeah. And the dust cloud hits him and then the music as all the Hashira kind of look in in terror at the explosion. Mm. Like, oh my god. That was yeah. unbelievable. Um, did, did you... It seems like everybody, myself included, you know, uh, upon um, first watch was confused and thought that Muzan initially caused the detonation or it caused the explosion only to realize later as his fucking you know flailing corpse is like thrown away that <laughs> yeah. was like oh no no that was that was our boy that was the master that was part of the plan yeah no i never i never thought it was moves i don't think that's his style he's not uh so for that to go off i had assumed they had laid a trap for him um yeah they could but... they had to have a move right it wasn't just like let's just yeah. wait here and die yeah, it, again, caught me by surprise. It's so funny too. I I had seen a spoiler that day without even realizing it was a spoiler. I was like, oh, that's that's like a funny joke. Like, kept kind of making a play on uh, the master there. Oh, like it was like something a line read of something like that. And I was like, oh, that's funny. Mm. I wonder what I wonder what the context is for that. I didn't think anything of that's it. That's funny. And then the explosion happened. I was like, oh, that makes sense. That, that is funny. But uh, yeah, I don't know. And I I thought. I will say, I do have one legitimate, and this might be a little bit of a hot take, because I know he has become quite the fan favorite the past, like, week or so. Ubiyashi? No, 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 the, uh, the Stone Hashira. Oh, Giyome, yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of love right now, again, for the scene of, like, him kind of thrown down with yep. on until everyone shows up. I gotta say, we've been there, done that. They, like, that whole, like, it was cool to see him, like, popping off, mm -hmm. but it was like they literally repeated the Tenkin and uh, Gyoza fight. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't actually disagree. I think, uh... I, I was kind of let down. I was like, really? That's, like, the fighting we're going to get is, like, kind of this rehash, and then, you know, see it in a year, maybe two. Like, yeah. I, um, I was I, a little bummed with that. No, I don't disagree. I thought the, uh, there actually, when you, like, if you wanted to, like, really nitpick it, there are, like, a couple of things that are very peculiar about the story. Sure. Kiyosa, Kiyotaro, not Kiyosa, Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, I think Kiyosa. <laughs> Wait, you know, when Tengen was fighting the dumpling. Um, no, I, dude, I didn't even hear that. That's funny. But, um, yeah, I, I don't disagree. The art style, especially with, like, the exploded background in the back. The red, like, the, the red, almost, like, the, um, the, the, the blade scratching. Color. Yeah. yeah, like, it was, like, very similar. I saw somebody post it. They're like, look at it in slow-mo. Look how good it looks. And I was like, yeah, like... They almost maybe should have slowed it down a little bit because it looks a little blurry and you could kind of be yeah. like, you know, anyway, so I'm very curious to see how he does. Um, I'm very curious because they really, Demon Slayer does this stuff all the time. Sometimes it's annoying. Sometimes it works. I mean, it's also like an anime thing. Sure. But they really glaze over uh, the fact that Lady Tamayo is like, ah, I put the cure in you. Anyway, see ya. It's like, wait, what? Yeah, I had to, Leanna had to remind me. She's like... She made a reference, like, you know who she's talking about, right? I'm like, what do you mean, who's she talking about? She's like, oh, you didn't see that line? I was like, what line? And I had to go back and watch it. And she made a reference to the... Because he, he made... Like, in retrospect, it's like, oh, it was obvious. Because he was talking about whose blood art is this. And she makes a reference to when Tanjiro runs into Moose yeah, on... Season one. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to know that? And he goes, well, yeah. Like, he had to have, like, read it and, like, you know. And so she knows. And I'm like... They could have done maybe a little, taken a little more time with that, like an extra second or two of but, dialogue. But and also, how did she get the cure? I mean, I'm assuming it's like here. I bet here's a call, and I've seen no spoilers whatsoever. But this is just how Demon Slayer does stuff sometimes. Mm. It's like okay, so she says, Muzan, you absorb my fist. It had the cure in it, mm. and then I'm betting, you know, in movie one, two, or three, towards the end, as Muzan's losing, presumably. 
Hmm. There will be a flashback in which we see Tamayo working with the insect lady and they like talk about finding the cure and like how yeah. to get it in Buzon. And like, yes, fine. Like that's not like, that's not like uh, retconning or anything like that. It's just weird because yeah. they, like they set it up way early and then they always refuse to tell you about it until later. You know what I mean? Hmm. It's funny because, you know, like I know a big highlight of the episode and it is a highlight for me, but just kind of the almost like the moments of like just like drawn out staring at one another between Muzan and uh, Ubu Yoshiki. Like it's, it was just like, guys, like let's cut out some of the dead air and maybe fit in like one or two other things or even expand upon others. Like they have this, you know, this highly totted like, yeah, 70 minute episode, like get real. Like, I'm so sick of that, dude. Yeah, like it's irritating. The, it, like, just say it's going to be 40 minutes without commercials. Or just say and, it's going to be, you know, like, I don't know. The pacing was in that first half. Like, I, was I, dr- yeah. I get it. I understand that this is a big meeting that you've been building to. Um, but, yeah, they they really squeezed that for all it was worth. And, like, they, or I agree. They the rehash of, like, the Michael Jackson video at the top of the episode. Yeah, and I was like, was did, no one, did no one stick around for episode 7 to see, like, the ending? Or, like, the see the hidden ending it also call in, it, it also inflates runtime needlessly yeah because you're just showing the shit from last episode it's kind of silly yeah um but I'll, anyway we'll see it in theaters we will review it here it'll give us an ep- it'll give us an mm. excuse to see a movie together maybe we yeah, could do so. an in-person review of each one or something i don't know maybe we could record it on video it's far enough away i don't know yeah I'd love um to do that. anyway so so that's exciting anything else we missed um Dude, obviously like, lots of really cool like demon slaying moment like all the hashira everybody going in with an attack to get lured in and then dropped into the castle was cool oh yeah oh the castle shot too i'm going into unbelievable the me- everything they do funny online is so good yeah i know Just that the audio cue the <laughs> <laughs> zenitsu looks serious is awake for the first time and serious yeah um, yeah that looked cool did have a spoiler on that i was pretty bummed about that one uh, about the fact that he opens his eyes or more than that no just kind of like why he's serious oh that blows yeah um, i have theories uh, but i don't want to go over them now um mm. maybe we'll do some promo as the movies get closer i'm very excited yeah um okay you want to get into house of the dragon sure yeah okay god where do we even start so where are we we're on season two episodes i believe three and four. Oh yeah yeah we, get, we have to talk about three as well yeah i okay so maybe i can I could probably summarize some of the main plot threads. Sure. Um, Sir Kristen Cole has marched into the Riverlands and has had many a successful battle. Mm-hmm. Damon is having fever dreams at Heron Hall. Wild stuff. Rhaenyra snuck into King's Landing and had a conversation with Alicent where they kind of realized that there was a misunderstanding, but Alicent has, is kind of of the opinion that it's too far gone. Mm-hmm. Aemond, uh and his brother Aegon the king have, no have antagonizing are no yeah have some misunderstandings and then there was some uh, dramatic twists in their relationship in episode four. Aegon uh, himself uh, feels and appears to be rather young and useless and is made to feel pretty shitty about it and so he makes some pretty crazy decisions towards the end of episode four. Uh, there's dragon fights. Mm. Am I missing Love. any, like, major character um, stuff? I don't think not, so, right? Not really. Damon, Damon, Damon Rhaenyra, Alicent. Alicent is, continues to be one of the most poorly... I, I can actually... You know what? Let's just jump in on this. I cannot believe... Again, I haven't read the book. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I watched season one and quite enjoyed it. I thought everyone was spectacular. Mm-hmm. I cannot believe how dirty they're doing her, her character this season. She, like, I don't know if they're trying to play up. Like, it's, she's just over, like, out of her mind, stressed out, and is making all these mistakes, uh-huh. and, like, not re Like, it, it just it feels very, like, you know, like, childish of her. Like, when she's not, like, she has shown that she can be a bit of a fierce leader. Like, she has a problem where she's being, like, tucked away, mm-hmm. and, you know, the men are kind of doing their wanting. But, like, it just, the season just feels like she's kind of almost, like, set-dressing. You know, right. like it, it, it feels a little unfortunate to me because I thought she was so good in the first season. And now it's just like, you know, she's getting one up by Rhaenyra. She's getting like, you know, just throwing like the only like real dialogue she's getting is kind of like throwing down Aegon. And even then it just seems petty. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know. It's just a, I think it's a bit of a bummer. 
Yes, yeah, I would. I would agree that she's probably not being fully used to her capacity. I'm hoping mm. that that's because like there's more exciting stuff to come Could from be. her later down the road. I don't know what the deal is, but I agree that um, if she's taking a bit of a backseat, and I'll, I I kind of felt that way about Damon's arc mm. until episode four. Um, this most recent one, yo, the like fever dream stuff they're doing with him. I love it. I absolutely love it. Like the what what are the, what are those trees called that like brain? The weirwoods. The weirwood tree stuff, the fever dream stuff, him chopping off child they brought back the younger actor for Rhaenyra. Yeah. Him cutting her head off in that dream and then the head talks it was like awesome. Her sawing the head back up in uh, episode three. Ugh, I thought ugh. that was wild. Yeah, that could be the heebie-jeebies. Um, everything that's happening to him at Hall, I love. I, I think I remember George R. R. Martin saying uh, Damon Targaryen was his favorite character he had created within the franchise. Really? Because uh, he was the perfect, I think George is on record saying this several times, that he's a perfectly morally gray character. Hmm. Uh, he's a rather complex. Matt Smith is doing a, it's his name, right? Yeah. Uh, is yeah. doing a really, really uh, good job. My boy. Um, the internet in the last couple of weeks has de- developed an obsession with hating Kristen Cole. I love it. <laughs> so much so that the actor had to turn off his Instagram comments. <laughs> Crazy. It's like Joffrey all over again, that poor bastard. He quit acting after Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> poor kid. Yeah. Um, I don't Such know. Such a more vile character in like a performance though. Like it was. Hey, he's got the, yeah. Kristen Cole has time. He could get there. Yeah. He could get there. Yeah, I don't know if he survives long enough. I get that feeling too. I think I think we say bye to him by the end of the season. They might be setting him up for a really satisfying death. Uh, who knows? Um, what did you think of the Aemond uh, kind of betrayal? I don't. I don't know if I want to say kind of. It, it, it seemed pretty blatant. One hundred percent. Yeah, pretty blatant betrayal. Well, it's. It, I, I think. Um, Shouldn't have made brand. fun of me, dude. Shouldn't have made fun of me. Um, yeah, I don't know, and like also so recently too, like. A, also, I, I think like I think it was pretty obvious. Like Aegon was drunk. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To a certain extent, like again, I'm not sure how long that flight took. He sobered up. Maybe I'm sure he may have sober up in the sky when we you're flying on a dragon. But yeah, but uh, if anything, you know, ego wounded, all yeah. that bullshit. Not yeah, 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 really yeah. in full control of his faculties, probably. Yeah. Right? You know, so I I thought I thought like the fact that he was like opening up, you know, the dragon fire on was one thing. But like right at the end of the episode, like Kristen comes upon yeah. him like tr- like clearly like going to like put him out of his misery yeah i was like oh that's i think that's the bigger you know kind of take on the situation right like he was you know at least he was going to finish what he started or whatever and now he can't but uh my so they don't make it clear that he's a hundred percent dead um, yeah Aegon, i mean and also i think this is obvious but i'm just fact checking with you is he aimed next in line for the throne if Aegon uh, dies? Uh, technically, there's another son. Because they referenced there was another son in Old Town. Oh, because they sent one away at one point? Yes. Or and, like, so he would be... Because Jaehaerys is dead. So now there's this other one with the dragon in Old Town. Oh, jeez. So, I think technically he would beat out uh, Aemon. But maybe if he's not around, Aemon just sees his power? I don't know. Well, I think that was like a big no. I remember, you know, just a couple of shows that I was listening to saying how there was a lot of fans like they could not believe that like the other brother was not mentioned in season one. All that oh, much. okay. And when his, his name was dropped this season, or like early, I think in episode one, um, or episode one, whatever the episode that uh, Otto gets kicked out, so that'd be two. Oh, okay, yeah. So he makes a reference to him in Old Town and like the word out on the street is like, oh shit, like if they're bringing out his name up, there's a reason for that. So I was right. like, oh, okay. So, you think Otto comes back? 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. another thing. In some form, yeah. Um, so, you know, the confusing end that was Game of Thrones, one of the many things that happened that was, you know, somewhat controversial at the time is Arya kills the Night King, right? Mm. And one thing Game of Thrones did not do was... I mean, one thing they did do is, at that time, they made it clear that Valyrian steel could kill uh, the Nightwalker people. Sure. Are, yeah. Were they called Nightwalkers? Am I fucking crazy? Zombies? Um, in in the show, they're called White Walkers. White Walkers, Jesus. Yeah. That's what yeah. I meant. 
You had said uh, that, didn't you? I, th- I said Nightwalkers. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, but they close. make it clear Valyrian still can kill them. Yes. And Arya uses a dagger that's introduced in season one of Game of Thrones to stab and kill the Night King. Mm-hmm. And then later on, you know, as uh, D&D were like making their apology tour, they were like, oh, you know, that blade has quite a bit of significance. And um, I don't know if you've picked it up, but it's what Aegon uh, inherited from his father. And it's what Aemond picked up off of oh, a- yeah. uh, Aegon. They've been flashing this thing around since season one. Like, yeah, they're like showing a, it in like all of necklace. the. Uh, <laughs> they're showing all of all, all the previously ons. You know, they're like, mm. "Oh, look at this blade." I think it, it's kind of you know it reminds me of a bit. It's a bit Disney ish, Star Wars ish, in that like you see a movie that's, oh, that's interesting. Like um, somehow Palpatine returned, right? Sure. And then cut to three years later, they're like, "Look, a series of comics that explains how he returned." See, it's not bad <laughs> storytelling. Um, it reminds me of that. I was watching a video today. It was just like, you know, like the top 10 moments in the most recent episode or whatever. And the joke they had made about the, the knife was the knife with nine lives. <laughs> Which <laughs> just, I was like, well, that's pretty funny. I guess that thing just keeps shit popping up at pretty that's key funny. moments all throughout the, uh, kind of like the bigger series, uh, canon. But, uh, yeah. yeah. It's Valyrian still, right? It doesn't like age, it doesn't yeah. rust, so like it makes yeah. sense to be handed down over a hundred plus years. And I guess the only other thing like we didn't really t- talk about, which is to be fair, like what has taken over the internet quite a little bit, is people were like, I always find this quite interesting. Um, really saddened by the dragon deaths. That was uh, a brutal fight, though. Like yeah. they did a really good because that's the thing they 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 really been teeing up just like how like awful the dragon on dragon warfare is like it's not pretty and it's yeah. ugly and it's like it was like watching two you know and this is gonna sound grim but it was like it was like watching two dogs fight yeah like no one feels good watching that yeah and i think to to their credit of making the show like it's same thing like when Rhaegal died in game of thrones and he oh. went down Everyone's just like, <gasps> like, oh no, like you, you don't know. think it's gonna hurt, and then it does, and then it does, and just over like, a I'm... CGI creature, and everyone's fucking Incredible. really upset. I and the f- yeah, I was bummed. Sam, I, I remember uh, Rainey's was because Sam was traveling, and so I, I watched it without her the first time, and then I rewatched it, and she saw it for the first time last night. And as Rainey's was getting on, or was saying like, hey, we're heading out, Sam's like, wait, did the dragon die this episode? <laughs> I was like, oh god. <laughs> You can sniff it out now. You go. This is gonna hurt. It was. Re- it's really funny, but because there's like the two subreddits. There's the you know hot D, yeah, blacks and greens. And oh, I, was, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. So like, just the, where they only post about their side. It's pretty. It's a fun little kind of way at, at the end of every episode to see everyone's takes on uh, their side. That's funny. And there was like a uh, a post of a um, like a, to put a motion to rename the subreddit as uh, "Long Live Aegon and Sunfire." <laughs> Oh, because like they're like everyone is now on like I, apparently a lot of people on the subreddit are like yeah the only peop, the only member of like Team Green that we like you know kind of rush for now is like Aegon and and his dragon there everyone else is a bunch of bitches so that was, was like, a oh. great little yeah. improv moment by Kristen Cole when Aegon showed up he's like look your king's here let's go fucking get him that was a good little yeah. speech it was a good little speech. and you know what that's the thing it's like I. I think it's, like, to the credit of an actor where, like, they are playing a character where, like, fuck, I want to punch this guy in the face. Yeah. But then, like, he has these moments. And, like, the confliction, like, there was a beautiful shot in episode three, right before he goes on his conquest. And it's, like, uh, he's late for um, a small council meeting. Yeah. and Or, yeah, it's small council. Anyways. Um, and he's, like, looking down. And then it's, like... Then, like, the, post that scene, it cuts to, like, them burying the Eric and Arik. Yeah. And I was like, oh, the two scenes, the way they start. It was like he was, like, looking into the grave because he caused their death. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, just, they, there's they, there's some pretty snappy shots in this they, past couple episodes. In episode four, they gave him another beautiful shot. It's when he decapitates, uh, he beheads uh, one of the lords. Yeah. And then he is a wonder. He chops his head off and then he walks and a guy gives him a cloth to wipe his sword. And as he right, walks the down the battlements, all the, all the people bend the knee. Mm. And I was like, Oh my God, that was so fucking cold. <laughs> like, yeah. Very cool. Then, I gotta say, he looks so awkward chopping that dude's head off. Like it, it, it bugged me. I've seen uh, clips of it and it's like, yeah, oh, he looks so, I get it. It's the armor. The it's armor. Real. Yeah. 
you know, maybe real or not. I don't know. It just it looked super stiff to me. I was like, oh. I, I think it's the armor is my yeah. would be my guess. They got him in doing that in the Kingsguard armor, and then you realize like that stuff is so bulky compared to if you look at the people around him, right? He's uh he's carrying a lot of weight in that shit. My reasoning was if he's having a hard time at that angle cutting that dude's head off, how is he fighting in battle? Yeah, smoothly? I think practically. So like, like it's like you should yeah. probably just. Maybe ditch the armor, but I get it. It's like for the scene, King's Guard. you know. Yeah, yeah for the yeah, scene yeah. even. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, a good episode. Dude, I, I, I just, I fucking love. Like, I'm, I've started reading the second book of Game of Thrones today. Oh, uh, what is that? Just, a piece for crows? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. it's just you know, it's I had to go do like a because you know, there's just like so much like I, I did like a quick read through of like stuff that happened in the first book, like stuff that like wouldn't have been in the show. Yeah, and just like a refresh because it was like I said, I, I I finished the first season of House of the Dragon, and then the second it ended, I, I picked up the first book, A yeah. Game of Thrones, and started reading. But uh, so it's been a while. But uh, I just love this world. Like yeah. there's complaints and there's this and that. But uh, the pacing is definitely quite different uh, mm. compared to Game of Thrones. Um, and maybe last thing on this is that I because I say it almost every episode. You know, it's one thing that's also very clear is they learn so much about dragon CG. Um, <laughs> yeah. on Game of Thrones and it like is really paying off in this show just because of how much more dragons are involved mm-hmm. uh, in, the, in the show and some of these shots dude like have you noticed some of the POV rider shots on the dragon where the dragon's looking back at you mm. or you see the dragon's long neck it's yeah. They're very cool. And obviously, uh, actually, they used that kind of a shot when Vagar killed Rhaenys' dragon. And that was the uh, that was the most upsetting one to me. For real. I also really loved how they like they played into the whole fact that like they're fighting in the sky, but everyone's just like suffering on the ground below them. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, But to, to your point of like the shots of the dragon, there was one in episode three when Bela and, is it Moondancer? Yeah. When oh, she spots, chase. That was a great shot too. Oh. She chases him into the woods. I was like, yeah, get his well, ass. Dude, I was like, I was like, it's it's way too early for him to die. But like, yeah. when when Damon lands at Harrenhal in the rain on his, <sighs> like, just Chef's kiss, yeah. so good. Yeah. Uh, the CG's like an really absolute good. devil. In the dark. That's the thing too. Like, you know, some scenes always look better at dark because they can hide so much shit. Yeah, that whole like the Harrenhal landing was like, oh yeah, and like I remember Vagar, um in the end of season one when they were leaving Storm's End. And, like, you could kind of see, like, they land and Vagar's there. Oh, and my like, God. One oh. of the best shots of the whole franchise. Oh, and then... It, and then it shows his size. Or her size, Ve- actually. Vagar, like, coming out of the, the forest hideaway. Unbelievable. And then slumping back down of, like... The exhale. Conserve energy. I was like, wow. These are just big dogs. Yeah. Like... They're making uh, yeah. crazy headway on, on the dragon stuff. Okay. We gotta move on. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you want to talk about next? Do you want to, I guess, just quickly get through Kaiji number eight, Mishoka Tensei? We had a couple kind of not crazy finales. Yeah, that's true. Eh? We did have, uh, yeah, we did have a couple finales. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about Kaiju first, I suppose. I mean, I don't want to say it's not. It's not a nothing burger. We got a we got a fun fight. It was a nothing burger. <laughs> the fight well, was good, but the second the fight was over, it was like, all right, we'll see you in a year. Like that, that's basically. It, it, yeah, yeah that I don't want to downplay it. I had fun. This was yes, one of my yeah. favorite shows of the season. No sure. doubt about that. But yeah, like the show, the finale in like a nutshell is they have a fight. Kafka comes to his senses. Mm-hmm. The general decides he won't kill him. He'll recruit him. Mm. And we'll see you in season two. Yeah. Fucking is that pretty see, pretty much it? See you when I see you. 100%. Oh, and, they, and they, they tease Kaiju number nine. Uh, that he's like Again. hard at work and he's got the human bases mapped out. Mm-hmm. Um... And that they're going to target maybe Kafka on, on the way afterwards. I don't, the I don't goal know. is now him, it sounds like. Yeah. The, the voice effect and actor Incredible. that doing number nine is really fun. I was I watched a, uh, a clip today of the Hoshino versus Ten fight. Hoshino. And, oh, yes, yes, yes. And his line delivery, too. Like the number ten. Just kind of like the really guttural, mm-hmm. almost like Bane on steroids. <laughs> like you know the there's a lot of, like more or less like oh you thought this was like my final form which was like one of the biggest like all right we're gonna step this up a notch that was a couple episodes ago but again to your point i love the the uh, kaiju what, yeah the uh, a's okay mishoku yeah just kind of the way we thought it was gonna end it was just swept under the rug dude he's got two wives now <laughs> and my boy my my boy's into uh polygamy fuck it 
Oh or would it be polyamory? I don't know the difference. I bet one of the mm. sick people listening to this podcast does. Um, are they one and the same? I don't know if they are the same or not. But he's taken another wife, as one does. <laughs> another wife. <laughs> and, I mean, Grant, let's just, let's just call it how it is. He's, Eris will come back and will be the third wife. Yay, yeah. Yeah. Yay, dude. Yeah, obviously. 100%. 100%. They teed her up at the end of the episode. Yep. Not the shot I would have expected her in, weirdly. Yeah. I think that was my, my biggest, like, kind of oh shit moment of the episode. Probably the only oh shit moment of the episode was... I don't know why I expected her to be in, like, you know, um, in a more queenly, or, like, kind of, like, seeking that out. But I guess, like, she is, like, slowly trying to fight her way back to that, right? So... Yeah, I'm really... Kind sure. of like a like an adventure-ish shot of her, I thought yeah. was interesting. Yeah. I liked that. I thought yeah. it was a cool shot. I, I, I did like Ish, uh, Rudy speaking at Paul's grave. It kind of felt mm, a bit like a self-actualizing moment uh, for him. You know, but the rest of it is kind of shades gray for me. I'm kind of unsure about how I feel about this whole season. There are some highs. There are some lows. I will watch season three. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, other than that, I don't have a ton to say. The, you know, the Paul death scene, the, that was obviously like the best episode of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of build, a lot of time to get there. Yeah. I don't know. I had fun. Yeah. But like, I have. He's got a baby girl. He's got a baby girl. He's a dad. He's a dad. A couple wives. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want from me? <laughs> All right, what else? Uh, did you get a chance? I know, I know I mentioned it to you. Uh, did you get a chance to check out the Elusive Samurai? I never heard of it. Oh, okay. I'm, uh, pl- I'm playing. We watched it. We loved it. Did you really? As a team. Oh, I think, I think, uh, yeah, dude. I think Sam is, uh, on board for the weekly watch with this one. Fucking A, dude. Cloverworks is, like, crushing it these past, like, year or two. Like, they have some absolute... You, you can just tell it. Like, because they had Windbreaker last season. They have this. Oh, that was the... Oh, oh Sam. Okay. You know, they had, like, you know, they're all working on Spy Family and dressing you know, like this. Yeah. I, so, I, you know, I didn't keep up with Windbreaker, but, like, the thing that has in common with this is, like, very creative use the of fluidity. animation. The fluidity. Fluidity, choreograph, <gasps> uh, camera, camera work, you know, qu- camera and air quotes, but, like, just perspective stuff. Yeah. Hella fun. I this was fun because I, I pulled a zero dark grant on this one. I didn't yep. watch any. I just took the name, put it in Crunchyroll, hit play, Boom. and and I can't recommend that enough. If anyone listening is like, it's what incredible. is it? Just hit pause, go watch it, come back to to this, and and then you can hear us talk about it. But it's great. It's a great one to go in blind to. So a tip to you, David, and anyone listening: be very wary doing any research on this online. Mm. Because this is, again, the I saw a tip earlier, like a month or two ago, when the first trailer came out. And so, like, the top comment was just, like, a, a disclaimer to all future viewers. Oh. Um, and they said, like, there, like there, there's clearly, like, some mystical elements to it. Sure. But the story and the characters, mythical stuff aside, is a one-for-one to actual historic events. Oh, really? So, like... You look up a history book, you're gonna spoil yourself. Okay. <laughs> and apparently, like that's like a big fun part of the manga is like they stay true. Or like, again, this, this is just what this comment had said that there's a lot of like sticking true to the history and then having fun with the writing and kind of like filling in stuff to make it like this additional world, like a new world. But okay. it, again, it does. So stay out of some history textbooks in this period. I would say. Okay. Well, that's but, uh, that actually yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of adds like a really fun. Yeah. level of depth that I no, would not have guessed. And um, the thing is, like, I can't exactly fact check that. Well, because, <laughs> because then like, you risk spoiling yourself. Yeah, so I, even to, like, look it up a little further, like, hey, is this comment true? I think I told no, you. No one seemed to disregard it, so, but... Uh, yeah. I think I told you that happened to me in Vinland Saga. There's like, oh. I was like, how real is this? And then it was like, oh, <laughs> X real. character was one of the... Pe-. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, I guess it is. There was, uh, we were, when we went to that, like, th- that, uh, hobby store this past weekend, and we were in the manga section, and Leanna's like, don't, don't look at Vinland Saga. I'm like, why? She's like, cause, like, there's a cover right now, and I'm pretty sure it's a major spoiler. That's she's funny, like, yeah. She's like, just do not look in that direction. But, uh, I did, and it was a spoiler for sure. Oh, <laughs> so, excellent. It's, it's yeah. funny how hard it is sometimes, eh, to, like, pull back mm-hmm. your curiosity. You're like, yeah, but how big is it? Maybe I could forget. It was like the time you and I were in a store... 
I can't remember what book it was. It might have been a Demon Slayer one. It was like an art book, and you and I were just like flipping through it. Yeah. And you and I both had like the same realization at the same moment of like, we should maybe not <laughs> be looking in there. We just like slap closed and shut. Oh, fuck. Yeah. But yeah, no, Lucifer's Hammer, awesome. Incredible. I love the... Colors. The colors and... Character designs. Also like how violent it got. Shockingly violent. Shockingly violent. Like, like real violent. Like the way, like, they kind of didn't shy away from when the village is massacred. Like they yeah. showed a lot of it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this and is also, 100% like the, the show of the season I'm watching week to week. So it's also like, especially if you're not like you have like probably a broader range of taste of what you're into uh, sure. anime wise. And when you're kind of narrow, I don't want to say I'm narrow minded, but my taste can be a little narrow and I can be kind of picky, but that, mm. that often means you're watching a lot of stuff in the same genre yeah. And the issue with that is a lot of anime can begin to feel derivative, right? And it's sure. sometimes yeah. hard to get like excited about something new. And just only based off the pilot, it just felt like this was like a really big breath of fresh air. I was like, mm-hmm. wow, what a like a it just seems really engaging. Uh, I'm really excited. Do you, does it drop on the weekends? Uh, ooh, actually, I believe, it might, yeah, it might be Saturdays. Cool. Yeah, I thought, because yeah, yeah. I think I was telling you the other day, I was like, man, like, I didn't realize everything kind of wrapped up, and I was here on a Saturday morning, like, shit, what do I do? <laughs> I got nothing to watch. Yeah, yeah, no, so, the other thing, too, that it's the same, the manga, manga is the same as that Assassination Classroom, which is a huge fan favorite. It's yeah. the one where the, all the kids are trying to kill the alien there. Yeah. Or they have, like, a, a year to kill an alien or something like that, but, um, so it's kind of similar vibe, they really, like, I watched the comedy. The priest. I really like the priest character. Same. He did that really good. Like, the way he would, like, kind of... When he clearly sees into the future and you can see him mulling it over. And it's like, yeah. oh, he's he's telling us very important information in a gag. Yeah. But it's, it, you know, it, it's but it's hard to tell what's the gag and what's not. I think... I, I the, Like, just, like, the, the two sides to that character, I think, is just fascinating. And I assume... I wonder, like, if his friends... If his brother... Did they say his brother got killed? They don't... They did not confirm or deny... And then there's also the other I kind of like that. It, it, yeah. it, gives, it gives you uncertainty the way the protagonist would have uncertainty. And there was also the girl, there's like the line of like, oh, she's betrothed to him. And he's like, oh, I didn't have a say in that. Yeah. And there's like a really, oh, there was a scene too that I love where like the, the teachers are chasing him around and they finally yeah. corner him on the roof with the brother and the way he like tucks his hair in because he knows he's about to make a big jump. Yeah. And, but like, you don't even know that. Like, oh, he's about to like do something here. And then he does that huge jump and. The way like he hits and the the air comes out of him when he hits yeah. his chest, but like kind of like the exhale and it kind of catches his form. I was like, wow, this is very very, very very smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Windbreaker esque. To now that you've mentioned, big time. It, right? I, I recently I just I just picked that back up because now the season's over. I want to watch mm-hmm. through it. I watched a couple this morning, and the it's like a fi- like a big fighting part. These past mm-hmm. two episodes I watched and. Same thing, like the. Maybe I'll tune did, back in now that we got. Did you room. watch the? You watched the pilot. Just, just the pilot, yeah. There was a character. Um, there was a dude with an eye patch. I don't know if you remember him, but yeah. he he had a fight, and they're doing like dancer defense fighting with him that okay. I feel like I've never seen, at least not this well done. And I was just kind of like, whoa, like the show's got the juice. The studio's got the juice. So. Give me the juice. Yeah. Did you or did you not get caught up on the boys? Oh yeah, dude! I'm caught up. After oh, your yeah. after your scolding there, uh, I was like, uh, I immediately went and watched. Um, but so I'm caught up to the most recent one, season six. four, episode six, I believe. The uh, boys is back. The boys, boys are back. back. What, yeah, what do you make of season four? The first, it was a bit of a slog. The first uh, three, four episodes, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Um, <laughs> between like, uh, this is gonna sound this is gonna sound strange because I feel like that's weirdly kind of the strength of the show is like the infighting was beyond grading, um, more so than it normally yeah, is. Early, I yeah, 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 that's true. And I was like, hey, like this is something like you kind of we gotta get earn this moment a little bit. Like we we need to see a couple things go wrong for the infighting, and it was like right off the bat, like you know, if I have to hear like Starlight again, be like Butcher, like, it's like I like we know you don't like him, we all get it, like we understand Butcher's bad. But I feel like they're really like, mishandling her whole character this season, to be honest. But keep going. Yeah, and and like Huey too, and like I, I will say, I don't love Huey, but the way everything played out with his dad, which was oh crazy. Oh my god! And the mom coming back, and like like is she like is there something bigger or like kind of you know malevolent going on with her 
Whereas it was not. It was just like a. It was kind of like unboys like, which I it liked. They really pulled that off of like the sincerity of like she was like I was mentally ill. I didn't know what I was doing. I couldn't do it. Like I walked away. It sucks. And I don't know. I, I thought it was done gracefully and with Tastefully. taste. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so yeah, I don't know. But this most recent episode, that reveal. We're spoilers. Anyone listening for the boys? Can we? Can we talk about what happens this episode? Yeah, absolutely. And also, just to touch on that episode you just talked about, uh, got to give it up for Simon Pegg. That was, that was a great performance. Uh, what a real one. As a guest star. <laughs> yeah. Love, 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 love that. Um, anyway, yeah, what do you want to talk about specifically? Well, like, the reveal with Butcher and, like, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Like, I, they 100% got me, dude. They completely baited us with him seeing Becca in his head the whole uh, time. Yeah, yeah. And I believed he was, like, the CIA dude. He, you know, his old buddy was running into yeah. at the office because, like, they, they set it up perfectly where it made sense where he met him. It kind of like, rekindled with him and all these spots. And it, it was just... I was like, wow, yeah, Butcher is fucked. I only <laughs> caught it at the end of episode five because I saw I saw some reactor catch it. It's a, it's a oh, blink really? and you'll miss it moment. They show it in the reveal at the end of episode six. Okay. Um, but it's at the end of episode five when, you know, they're after the whole V, uh, you know, the crazy sheep thing happened. Yeah. Um, so butcher, that. butcher steals the scientist, you know, cuts off his leg and, yeah. you know, and then we see him at the end of episode five and he's telling the scientist, don't worry, we'll patch you up. And then he looks over his shoulder at the CIA guy. And then the doctor uh... goes, he looks behind butcher like, what? And it's just, that's it. That's the whole moment. And that was enough that some people picked up on it and they were like, boom, proof he's not real. And I was like, fuck. I was like, I hadn't even considered that. And then, <laughs> and then uh, there you go. Episode six. Uh, I'll be honest. When I'm watching The Boys, it's very like, it, because the show is so surface level. No, it's I'm very like I'm It's very you. in your face. You're, it's kind of like, it's not, by no means is it like, you know, phone in hand watching uh, with some of them, I'll be honest, some of them, but, uh, yeah, those first couple episodes, I think, like, dragging, I put, dragging, I put it really. in that, that TikTok I put out, dude, I was like, dude, like, I'm, like, borderline fast-forwarding through some of these scenes, like, the, <laughs> some of the Frenchie stuff, his, uh, romance arc with the guy whose parents he oh, killed, oh, yeah, and the Kimiko yeah, yeah. stuff, and I get it, like, you want to give these characters arcs, but, like, it has to serve the story, and it has to serve the character, and sometimes that that just wasn't really hitting the mark for me. No. Um, so yeah, I, I don't. I, I'm on the same page as you. I'm not really sitting there, you know, with the magnifying glass a lot of the time on the yeah. boys. Yeah. Anthony Starr, Incredible. annihilating it. In particular, that scene him oh my God. visiting the, the the facility in which he was held. That's why I yelled at you uh, last episode. Oh. I was like, oh my God, yeah. dude! I, I just loved that whole storyline uh, so much, and I was like that i don't know if it's a must-see tv but it was like my favorite up to that point in the season he is by far like the stand-up performance every week like he he's on the screen you're like here we go like i'm yeah. in um and then this most recent episode too where he kind of what is he doing? the buzz the buzzwords don't work in the room with the one percenters yeah and like he's fucking crying like he's borderline crying until uh is it vicky yeah yeah uh yeah she kind of steps newman. up because or newman Oh my god, when fucking Sage gets shot in the head and she's like eating the cake and like nodding her head like so good. And like Comedy. it makes so sense because they set it up like her bringing fucking deep to the room and getting her to, him to do the lobotomy, which was a very hard watch for me. The ice that was like, uh, the fuck out. They, they are, oh yeah, I forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, they push the boundary every now and then. But uh, well, I mean, and then this episode with Huey, good god. Like <laughs> Have you seen any of the, uh, I'm, I'm hesitant to use the word outrage, uh, but have you seen some of the controversy about that? No, no. So, and I'm not, I'm teeing this up for you, your interpretation, and for the audience. I'm not going to sure. come out here with a hot take. But there was a sexual assault, like, storyline early, right? I think between Starlight and The Deep. Remember that? When she joined yeah. The Seven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that all happened. And then there's effectively, like, it's a different kind. I mean, what Huey went through between Tech Knight and uh, also when Ashley came out of that elevator and he's in the sex dungeon, I fucking yeah. did a spit take out of my drink. I was like, yes, <laughs> like, let's go. Ashley's about to go unhinged here. And then um, I think it was the showrunner was doing an interview with, like, I don't know if it was Vanity Fair or so. It was a legitimate article, you know, Air yeah. quote, legitimate journalist. Um, 
and was like, oh, you know, did you feel bad for Huey? You know, you just killed his dad, and now you have him sexually assaulted, and, like, that was pretty fucked up. And he's like, oh, yeah, I don't know. We think we thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and people are like, wait, so it's funny when it happens to a guy, and not so much with the ant. And anyway, so that, so, of course, has taken a life of its own. I'm sure it has. I guess context is everything, right? But, like, the whole thing is <laughs> Huey was, like, undercover... And, like, yes, 100% got in a situation where, like, he would never have gone into himself. Yeah. You know, but it's, like, yeah, I, I, I see I see both sides there, but... Um, um, that was... Uh, yeah. That was quite the scene, though. The Web Weaver stuff was gross. <laughs> they they find a line every fucking season, and I really thought the, the eye lobotomy thing was going to be the worst of it. I don't know why. It's kind of like what we were talking about with the dragons in House of the Dragon, like... They're sometimes good something at the gore. Well, yeah, it's just sometimes something you know is so clearly fake, e.g., CGI dragons, yeah. can still get this emotional response from you. And even though the the web dimple up in his lower back is so clearly fake, it was so gross. Incredible. Um, when uh, oh god, poor mother's milk guy had to get in there, <laughs> and it fucking queen. Not the peril in the fucking world. Ugh. <laughs> That was, uh, that was, that was gross. Uh, I, I wrote, uh, every now and then though, they do hit you with a banger. I have one great quote. This is, uh, you were alluding to the scene earlier, uh, when, uh, Homelander's buzzwords aren't working on the one percenters yep. and then Newman takes, takes control. She goes on this great little monologue and one of the lines she gives is anybody who owns a live, laugh, love mug doesn't deserve a say in how our country is run. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. My, I think my favorite line delivery in the episode was when uh, they're in the dungeon and they're trying to figure out like what they're going to do with them, and they're like, you know, like they're stabbing him, and he's like getting getting off on it. Yeah. And the uh, previous sidekick breaks out and bolts. Oh yes, and yes. It yes. was Techno's delivery of like, Ladio, get help, boy. And, like, <laughs> yeah. I. I I had to I had to rewind what he did when he went to the computer because I was laughing so hard. It was just incredible, incredible delivery on that guy's. Oh, part. dude! Also, like Get when out, they, boy, <laughs> when they start that guy was good. When yeah. they start um, donating to super PACs, you know, like to to political opponents and whatnot. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren, hundred thousand to Elizabeth Warren, a hundred million or something. Hundred million. No, no, what it was is they go a hundred million to Black Lives Matter, and then Tech Knight goes, "No, not those people, no." <laughs> <laughs> that was good oh uh, fuck I actually have another quote this one's from episode 5 uh, and this one had several quotes I actually I think I have a, a collage saved but it's Frenchie's quote this man is in no condition to fuck a sheep oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say too the, the, one of the things I loved was uh, the fake out of Newman's head pop or self yes. head pop. Yeah, that was good. I think a, um, a trap they fell into with her is like, it was better when we no, no one knew who was doing that. Yes. And then for like, yeah, once it's revealed, like every moment you're like, okay, like who's going to get it? Like it's because yeah. you can feel like you're in the scene. You don't know who, but you, you imagine someone's going to get it. So to kind of like take it back to a point of like unexpected, like you would never see, expect her head to go like that. Yeah. I, I just thought it was very well timed. Good point. Like, you know, it's it's been a while since there's been that act to kept me, catch me off guard. Oh, but. dude. Like, and also, they made a satire trailer about making Training A-Train with Will Ferrell. <laughs> yeah, that, honestly, that I, I that was like a, a, um, a guest performance that, like, threw me off. I thought that was too much, personally. I, I just thought, I was like, and because that's the same episode that they do the V23 Expo. Oh, yeah, um, where they show, yeah. and they show you the like MCU chart of all their <laughs> interconnected movies. I was like, oh my god, these guys don't. Seventeen fun. new chapters. Here <laughs> are seventy-two new chapters in the uh, the yeah. Vought universe. Um, oh, there was one other thing too that I thought was really fucking choice. Oh, D, D, uh, the the guy that's like playing noir. It's the same and he's guy. Like, and he's like, uh, he's like, I don't get it. He's like, get yeah. it, but like. <laughs> Fucking uh, the most reviews episode. Oh, deep the of, deep like, tells. Did you know some and, people laugh at me? Yeah, <laughs> he's like yeah, and then but then like the delivery of like yeah, dude, like 
He, he went or he went to like fucking Panama or wherever he yeah. goes. He canceled back. Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he canceled. He was hard for like a month. He's yeah. like, I get it. He's like, I think I get it. And I'm like, oh, what is going on with the deep right now? He, he's the one too. I don't really understand what they're doing with him right now. Yeah, he's a little all over the place. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm curious. Are you saying it's the same actor playing noir? Yes. Oh, uh, you think he's a clone? No, no, I mean like um, like the noir that Homelander killed, the guy who had no lines through yeah. seasons one through three. They just is, kept him. They the kept him, and, and now oh, he has lines. That's awesome. I know, yeah. I agree. And uh, it's, it's, you, you particularly appreciate it now because his, his performance back then, though wordless, was quite mm. stoic and intimidating. And now he's like this kind of theater kid. <laughs> I don't understand the role, you know, yeah. and it's like completely different. I accepted... I accepted an offer at Cirque du Vat. Yeah, Cirque du Vat. I forgot I can, I can, I can fly. <laughs> Pretty good. So good. I love that. Okay. Uh, did uh, you check out any Out of the Bear? Oh, actually, no. Um, no? I watched Pilot. And? I <laughs> didn't love it. Oh, really? To be honest, yeah. Well, I, mean, I, talked, nothing... I was talking to Devin. He, he's watched it. He, was, you know, he, he really likes the show. And he's like, it's good. But like, I think in his, his opinion was like, they're really reaching for like the artsy high moments of like season two they're kind of right. like doing like maybe a full season of that okay. um i did like i did like you know like i i did like it big picture of the episode but carmy is my least favorite character by a oh. long mile and it was a very carmy focused opener hmm. and um yeah i don't know I, you'll see for yourself you know, I, 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 I do I intend to watch it, it. Um, yeah yeah I still, I still don't know if I love the decision that they dropped all eight episodes, but whatever. Um, yeah, I just yeah, like to, yeah. you know, Exhibit A, like Hot D on on the air on Sundays. It's just, love it. it's so funny. I get it. Like everything is cyclical. You know, back in the day, back in the day, people hated appointment viewing because everything was on at a certain time. But it's sure. nice to have like one show that everyone just watches. There's nothing like uh, oh, see some Severance uh, season two uh, teasers dropped today. Yeah, I'm seeing a little bit of news. Right, yeah. still no dates yet. Um, no, doing Morse code trailers oh, teasers. Cool. So I'm sure we'll have some answers tomorrow. Yeah. I, okay. So maybe let's talk to you a, a bit uh, about a little bit of news then. Mm. Uh, Gladiator two oh, yeah. trailer dropped today. Did you catch that? Fuck no, dude. Fuck blind. No, dude. That is, dark the, that, that is the most, that's double zero dark rant. Good, uh, good for you, because they do show you most of the plot in it, so. Of course, yeah. It's um, a really Scott movie. All his trailers get that. Yeah, I'm really interested to see where this goes, but it does look very good. Um, so I'll, yeah, I won't say much more than that. I'm, I, I, I'll be honest, I wasn't particularly excited about the sequel. Like, I really don't know if we need one. Having seen the trailer, I still don't know if we need one. Oh, yeah. But it looks fun as hell. Yeah, that's all I'm in for. I'm just I am ready for some big loud performances. Yeah. Um, I thought they chose. I did see a poster, a very interesting choice of a poster. Um, it's like cut up into six panels of six oh, characters, that, yeah. and there's like just three people that look completely deranged. I have no idea. You cannot tell who they are. Are you aware yeah. of the main cast? Yeah, it's a uh, Pedro freaking, and another guy. And Pedro Denzel. Denzel, and then Denzel looks good. What's that? He's that Irish piece of arse that everyone loves in the fucking yeah. Paul Mescal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So but Denzel right? looks good and like yeah. sounds good in the trailers. I'm excited. Oh, really? About it. Yeah, yeah, he looks good. I would like to see that. I'd like the guys get together and go see Gladiator. I think that'd be That'd be fun, yeah. eh? Yeah. Um Okay, so this isn't news, but I wanted to ask you. I I am I'm, I'm positive I know the answer here. I just need you know, I'm getting the old man brain. Um did you see the Alex Garland Civil War? Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't see it. I had to back out last second, I think, right? Yes, I believe um, so. Okay, so I think it's out on Blu-ray and uh, oh. digital. So I think I'm going to try and cue that up if I can find the time this weekend and maybe we Get can on. talk about it next pod. 100%. I still, there's still stuff I want to talk about. I yeah. wasn't going to talk about it until you, you had seen it. So. Yeah, because you're a G, dude. Yeah, dude. Um, my boy Sam Marill, Sam, uh, yeah, Sam Marill has a new special on Prime. I'm going to try and oh. watch that tonight. It's called cool. You've Changed. Comedy stand-up special. Um, not a ton of more news. Mushiko Tensei, the rumor, according to reliable leakers, whatever that means, uh, <laughs> season three not premiering until 2026. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. It's June 25, 24, so you would think that'd be enough time to even get like a late 25 release date, but who knows? Well, because that's the other thing too, it's broadcast, right? It's wonder if like everything's just, because there's a lot of stuff coming out next year. Yeah. 
Could be just locked up. Could be. Um, Blue Lock season two coming uh, uh, coming back on the air in October. Yes, sir. It gives it, it gives it people time to you know potentially go see that movie. Yeah, I'm. Is that that's out out? Right? I believe so. I think Vivian said it was. I wonder if it's too late. To yeah, I don't know. It's kind of to your point though. Like the way we opened the pod, we were talking about mm. like anime movies take many shapes and forms, mm. right? And like that is one of the. I, I, I'm not going to knock it until I've seen it, because you know I really enjoyed Blue Lock Season 1. Yep. But, like, I don't know if I'm dying to see it again from a different character's perspective. Yeah, that's like, fair. Because that's... You know what I mean? But I, who knows? Maybe it'll enhance the Season 2 experience or mm. maybe really change your understanding of Season 1. I don't know. Hard to say. Um, anything else on your end? Uh, yeah, a couple things. Uh, or two, two. Or three things. Yeah, a couple things. Um, the Oceano Co. Season 2 premiere. Oh, yeah. Dave, I still, I still beg of you. If I have to get on my hands and knees and pray, I think one of the biggest misses, or one of the, th- the biggest things you're missing is this show, legitimately. Um, I think it's incredibly up your alley. I know it's a little hard to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, not everyone has a fucking high dive subscription. Um, I, I just, I, the season opener was so strong. Um, they did this whole, so I, I guess small, minor, minor spoilers. The whole premise of this second season is. Uh, based around the behind the scenes and the performance of a 2.5D theater performance, like a like a manga adaptation to like a which is popular in Japan. Okay. And I've never like I know they're popular, but I don't really know what they are. And the whole opener of this season was a viewer's view, like almost like you're in the crowd watching the opening performance of this stage play. And, like, it shows, like, the screen, like, how the screens work and how, like, they introduce the characters or the story. Like, it's, it, w- it was one of the coolest things I've seen in anime in, like, ever. Like, and it's, I know it's, like, a little, like, it's one of my favorite shows now and, like, mm-hmm. I was super looking forward to it. I'm not trying to sound hyperbolic by any means, but I was, like, kind of, like, jaw-dropped of, like, very creative. And, cre- and then, like, just the creativity with the show is incredible. I or Anyone who hasn't seen Oshinoko, you should, you should be watching it. I think it's, like... It sucks that it's on a streaming service that like not a lot of people yeah. use. Um, it's the only reason I subscribe to it is just for this because I know it's on there. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. It was just really, really good. I was, you know, I love the first season so much. I was kind of, you know, you never know what you're going to get into a second season, but it's yeah. there. I'm like, boom, the show hasn't changed. Um, okay. So that was awesome. But um, and then I, I had some holidays last week and I watched the entirety of Delicious and Dungeon. Oh, right. yeah, you mentioned that. I think yeah. I told you I was like one or two in, and we really, really enjoyed it. Uh, do you know who, you know what the studio's last project was for this, Dave? No. <laughs> Edge Runners. Really? And wow, it looks nothing like that. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just thinking art style, obviously. Art yeah. style. Like, that's the thing. When it, like, the art style is, like, you know, the manga and, like, that. But when there's, there was a couple, like, b- blew me away action set pieces. And I was like, oh, that's fucking Trigger. Like, Trigger's doing their thing right now. And all I can think of was, like, some shots of, like, David. Like, I, I don't think there's any homage shots or anything like that. But yeah. just, like, their kind of flashy animation style when it comes to action. There's just... It's just so them. It's, like, signature. You know? It's... Um, it just blew me. I, like, I knew huh. it was them. And then, like, one of these big moments would, like, kind of come up. And I was like, holy cow. Like, you know, when you have, when you have like, such a unique, like, thumbprint of your style. Right. To see kind of, like... From show to show. And I know it's, like, not always the same directors and different staff, but, like, a lot of this stuff still blends through. Yeah. And there's just something about it, you know? I was just like, fuck, like, awesome. I had absolutely no idea. It's incredible. But it was, it's on Netflix, and I think yep. we had so some really there's a, I think there's a... episodes? 24. Fuck, you blitzed so, through that, eh? I had, I had, like, a week off, dude. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, no. Just, just hanging out and playing Elden Ring, I guess, you know. De- <laughs> literally i watched delicious in dungeon and caught up on the boys and played shadow of the earth tree b shadow of the earth tree so. hell yeah i i think i told you i rolled credits on phantom liberty and i just felt like this major like sigh sigh i mean it also the ending that i got also broke my fucking heart into pieces but uh not the one you were hoping or like is it like was it like shoot i shouldn't have made that choice earlier or was like your choice played out in a certain way you didn't expect Good question. Um, Cause that's the problem with RPGs sometimes. I, I don't know if I would change it. Um, I would just say bittersweet. Fuck yeah, dude! You're a role player at heart. I love that. 
<laughs> yeah, I would just say bittersweet then. But I, I like, uh, you know, we've talked about this a million times, but it's like, it was so uh, satisfying for me to finally get a gaming PC and for that mm. to be the game that I really put time into mm-hmm. was just like perfect. Like that's a game I'll play. Uh, I just, I'm not big on replay value, especially for RPGs, but that, that is a game I will do several runs of, mm. like without a doubt in my mind. I fucking that's love awesome. that game. That's awesome. It's my next, uh, it's my next, right now, now that I'm done Elden Ring, well, I'm not done, I'm still, like, bopping around playing, doing odd stuff now, but I, I want to go back and finish Final Fantasy 16, which I started, shout out to Bratzen, mm. and, uh, for lending me that, and, um, but yeah, I think after that, my next game is probably Cyberpunk, I'd like Hell to yeah. get in, just really get into that, but sorry, I, I do just want to talk about Delicious Intention just a little bit longer, um, yeah. incredible world building, like, the the thing, the reason I, and I, I'm glad you guys started watching it, and I hope you guys do continue, is this is the perfect middle ground between Freerun and Michelle Patente. Oh, yes, that's what you saw, said to me the other day. And it, when, what I mean by that is, like, there's the world, like, on the Freerun side, and I guess it, where it kind of blends and meets in the middle between the two is, like, the world is taken very seriously. It's, like, it doesn't have the isekai stuff. It's just it's just a fantasy story, fantasy characters, you know, typical tropes. But the way like, you know, it's like it's just like it's just like as a matter of fact, it's just like a way of life. I really I really really dug that. And then also too, it's it's nice to see a fantasy story where the group is not exactly like they're not like green like they're not fresh like they're experienced adventurers. Like they assess situations based on their experience. And they kind of, you know, work through it as, like, they can. There is going to be things that, you know, catch them up they haven't seen before. But, like, they are very competent, which it was just, it felt very refreshing by the end of it. Like, oh, it makes sense that they did this because, like, they do the research and they made a plan and they stick to the plan. And even though, like, because, like, the, like, the series starts off with, like, a huge disaster. And you would think, like, oh, like, maybe they're, like, bumbling idiots and, like, they walked into a fight with a... You know, because the show opens up with a fight with the dragon. Yeah. And uh, they lost. And, like, the show is not that. Like, it's... They are very competent. And, uh, you know, they were in that situation for a reason. I don't... I was... I was... Like, I know I say this a lot. But, like, I got got to the end of it. And it just... The story was, like, so serious. And there was moments of, like... Yeah, it's, like, you know... And, like, the characters are having... And there's, like, some animism stuff and this and that. You know, like, they kind of have fun. Or whatever, but like when characters are like having like a, a disagreement, there's there's a point there's a point where two characters are having a disagreement over something that happens, and it's like they're like very like staunchly like they are sticking to their points, and it was like right. oh like this it, it felt like a like a real argument between people like they're not just gonna start slugging each other yeah you know like an like you know like sometimes they kind of go that way I, I was just, you know and there is gonna be a second season okay um coming I'm not sure when but like I'm in. And, you know, it was just one of those things where I had watched the episode. I think it was all that shit was going on with my eye right as it came out. I couldn't focus on it. And I, you know, I couldn't get into it. But, like, week after week after week, I was, like, reading online, like, how fucking amazing the show was. And I'm like, God, like, I'm fucking, like, what did I miss in those first two episodes? And I went back. Just and had to keep watching. Just had to keep watching. And, um, yeah, it did very, like, it is definitely more freer than it is Michelle Kutense. Okay. Um, but, um, and, like, the dishes, like, the way they make the food and, like, the the creativity they, like, get to, like, you know, it, it doesn't feel like they're stretching to, like, make these meals. Like, they, they find some real world comparisons and, like, if it just feels like a very well, like, researched show. Yeah. And the manga, I don't know, it's just, I was, I was blown away by it. I also very highly recommend Delicious in Dungeon. It's on Netflix. Okay. Everyone, everyone has Netflix. Everyone can check this I'll out. I'll hit it up, dude. All yeah. right. Jeez. Get yeah. off my case. Yeah. <laughs> There's a higher likelihood of me hating that than Oshinoko. Hating that? No, uh, hitting Or it. watching that. Oh, hitting it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could maybe I'll hate watch Oshinoko. I'm kidding. Yeah. Good uh, luck. I, I will give them, a, I'll give them a shot at some point. Um, Does that about do it, my friend? Yeah. Yeah. What an That's action-packed it. week. Man, we had a lot of stuff. That's what happens when you take these bye weeks. We everything, there's a lot of meat left on the bone. I'm enjoying get it. Back in. Me too. Okay, I think I think that's about it. High note on Delicious and Dundon. Maybe I'll try and watch a couple episodes by the time we're back for episode 127. We'll, yeah, boy. we'll see about that. But otherwise, okay, thank you guys so much for listening. Follow the podcast if you want to hear the next one on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, please support the show. Follow us on social media. Instagram, TikTok, 
Facebook, I think, Part-Time Otaku Podcast. Just look it up, okay? I'm not going to do everything for you. Thank you again for listening. We'll see you next time. Grant, go ahead and say the thing. Bye, guys. Cheers.